Happy Feast of Unleavened Bread. Today is the 15th day of the first month of the new year. Amen. Amen. This month is a bid. Yes. And Yahuwah, the Most High, has blessed us all to be here. Yes. You're here with, this is the people of Yahuwah's Word Assembly. And uh, we're just so grateful to the Most High for our gathering as we have every Sabbath. Today is also Sabbath day. No work shall be done. And we're, we're here today. We're all gathered here in Palm Coast, Florida. And we thank our pastor and his lovely love wife for having us here. And we're just happy. So we're, I'm going to introduce Pastor Taiwo very shortly. And uh, we're going to have a presentation today regarding the, uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. There's a lot of misconceptions about it, a lot of misunderstanding, and we're going to make it plain today. But first, I'm going to read our mission statement. And our mission is to bring opportunity for repentance to all people in the name of Yahuwah through Yahusha Messiah by calling all the world not some of the world, but all the world to recognize and embrace that Abba Yahuwah, most high sovereign creator and supreme judge of all, inspired his set-apart Hebrew prophets to write the set-apart scripture, Genesis to Revelation. Yahuwah has ordained his set-apart scripture as the standard for righteous living and the tool by which Yahuwah through his only begotten son, Yahushua, will one day judge all the world in righteousness and grant to all who trust and obey his word of truth entrance into the life everlasting and eternally peaceful and joyful kingdom of Yahuwah and Yahushua. Hallelujah. 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 Well, what I wanted to say also is that uh, my name is Elder Kevin, and uh, as I said, I'm going to introduce uh, Pastor Tywell today with uh, uh, an opening statement and uh, go from there. But I first want to let you know that we are not associated with any hostile group. The Father said everyone can be saved through the set of ones, and we want everyone in the world, all tribes and nations to be a part. Because if you are of Yahuwah's word and you believe and your faith is in Yahusha Messiah, then you are already a member of people of Yahuwah's word. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're not associated with any groups, any hostile groups, we want everybody. So with that said, I wanna bring on our pastor, Pastor Taiwan. Thank you, Elder Kevin, for that uh, that great introduction. Yes, people of Yahoo's Word Assembly, we are here in uh, sunny Florida to just bask in the sun of righteousness, Yahusha, and to be very just express our thanksgiving, our praise, our adoration for our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah who has made this all possible. He has breathed into each of us his breath of life and has granted us opportunity to embrace righteousness, to choose righteousness over wickedness, to choose humility over selfishness, to choose the good and to refuse the evil. Mm -hmm. This is what we are called to. This is the good news. You see, the idea is, is that, oh, you can't make any changes. You can't do anything. You're crooked, you're wicked, whatever. That, that's just the way you're gonna be for the rest of your life. But the good news of the mm -hmm. gospel says what? Hey. Elder Emmanuel. Elder, you shall know the truth, the truth shall make you free. The truth shall be a little louder. Thank you you shall free. know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. 
Absolutely. Right? That's yes. right. So we will know the truth. That's the gospel. That's right. Right, Brother Chris? Yes, that's the gospel. That's the gospel. That's the good news that we will know the truth of Yahuwah's say, salvation, plan of salvation right. and sending his son. And how is it going to make us free? He's going to empower us. Mm, right. Yahuwah, Yahusha is infinitely oh, yes. stronger than Satan and all his mm, corrupt yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay? So therefore, he will make us free from sin, yes. from guiltiness of conscience, yes. from all of those evil things that, that plague the people of this world. That is why. That's the good news. The good news is that Yahusha has come and has executed his father, Yahuwah's plan, was faithful even until death. Yes. Amen. And Amen. because of his righteousness, his choice to live by his father's word as a man in this body, but first as the son mm -hmm. of the infinite Yahuwah, so he is the he, by inheritance, has a greater name. He is the son. He did not remove himself from his father's sonship. Okay? Before he came to this world, he was not a man. He was co-creator with his father. Okay? And, and he was of that same substance that the father was of. Okay? And then he humbled himself, took on the seed of Abraham, the scripture says, took on flesh, it's like, it's like a, a, a butterfly, just a simple analogy, a butterfly turning into a worm. Mm. Think about it for a second. Mm, yes. Okay? A butterfly turning into a cat, that glorious, you know, creature that's flapping and flying all over the place, turns into a lowly, you know, lowly caterpillar. Okay? No wings. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So... Yahusha became one of us, okay? Didn't forsake his, you know, his, his uh, connection to the Father, okay? Because he's still the Son. Because he was the Son, he could pay the price for our sins. As Isaiah 53 so perfectly states it, okay, he could. The sins, our sins were laid upon him. Okay, and by his stripes we are healed. Yes. Praise Yahuwah. So, Passover, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about the importance of Passover. Today, we had a wonderful experience. You know, the scripture tells us that on, on in Exodus chapter 12, that we are to, on the first day of unleavened bread, Okay, which is today, yes. all right, mm -hmm. which is a, a Sabbath, a seventh day Sabbath. We are to remove the leaven out of our houses, our living spaces. So, leavening, what would leaven be? So, yeast, mm -hmm. or I'd say something that causes something to rise, right. that right. infuses that grain, flour, or whatever that typically is used, and, and we use it to make things you know, fluffy. So, it's baking powder, okay. Uh, and yeast elements, mm -hmm. all right, we were to remove them. And so we had a great time going through the cabinets and and uh, the refrigerator and identifying foods that had leaven in them. So why did, why do we think that Yahuwah gave us this object lesson? There's a very important reason. You see, Yahusha came, okay, he was already unleavened. That's right. Yes, sir. He was Listen already <laughs> unleavened. In other words, he did not have that spirit that is in all of us, that sinful yeah. spirit yeah, that we sin. all have been contaminated with. Yes. He did not have that. And he came already unleavened. The Father sent him into the world. He was filled with the spirit of Yahuwah. And when he came, he showed us what needed to happen. Yes. He showed us the example. He lived a life choosing 
righteousness through belief in his father. You see, the scripture talks about the faith or the belief of Yahusha. That's not just knowing who Yahusha is, but it's actually exercising the same attitude towards the father that Yahusha right. did exercise. So, so Passover was yesterday. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. But he, God, according to scripture, okay, according to scripture, all right, he was to be sacrificed. He, he died on the 14th day of the, of the first new moon, okay, according to scripture. And he gave his life so that we could live. So he was already unleavened. He did not have that evil spirit in him. So now he died. Now we are to do the same yes, thing. Right. Okay? We are to die to self. self. That's right. We're to die to selfishness. Well, what's causing that selfishness? The unleavened. Yeah. That's that leaven. That's that right. Leaven. Leaven. Yeah. That yeah. leaven. Okay, which the scripture says is uh, to remove that leaven of wickedness and malice and, and all those types exactly. of things. Okay, so we're to remove that from our lives. Okay, what did just happen? Yahusha paid the price. Okay, Yahusha paid the price for the sins of the whole world. Okay, not just Hebrews. Not just people of, um, that are biological descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No, but for the entire world. That's right. Everyone who puts their trust in Yahuwah and his plan of salvation is willing to walk in obedience to his commands. He will give that power. That's what grace is, is the power to overcome the temptations of Satan. Mm, yes. Okay, yes, it's not just right. some, you know, some blessing upon a person. No, it's power. Power, that's the word. It's yeah. power, power to overcome, to tell Satan, get thee behind me. I'm not playing with your nonsense. That's right. Okay, on. no, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to embrace that foolishness that you're trying to tempt me with. No way. Mm -hmm. It is written. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, I'm going to do all those things that are pleasing to Yahuwah. Amen. Okay, yeah. so grace is the power of Yahusha to give us victory over Satan, That's who right. is a defeated foe. Yeah. Right, Brother uh, Jonathan? Yeah. Satan is a defeated foe. Okay, the scripture says that <laughs> that the that Gehenna hellfire was designed for Satan and his yeah. his messengers. That's right, his angels, not for us. Okay, he already chose, Satan already chose to rebel against Yahuwah. Yeah. Okay, so now is our opportunity, our opportunity to say yes to Yahuwah, yes, yes to Yahusha, yes. and embrace righteousness and call Satan what he really is, a liar, That's right. a murderer, That's right. a thief. thief. Okay, in all of the below. That's right. Yes. Okay. All, of the below. <laughs> all the below. Come on, teach all right? now. Teach now. He is all teach of it. that. And we don't need to mess with his stuff. That's right. We don't need you. And, and Yahusha demonstrated as a man, uh-uh, you don't have to. You can have victory now. Right. Okay? Right. You can have victory now That's over right. Satan's temptations. That's, right. That's the good news. People, that's the good news. And don't let anyone try to deceive you otherwise because Satan is already defeated. You do not have to continue in sin. Listen up. You don't have to. And all those who choose sin and who have pleasure in unrighteousness will find themselves making an appointment with the lake. And I'm not talking about Lake George over here. <laughs> I'm talking about the Lake of Fire. Mm. So we need to be mindful. Yahuwah has given us the victory through Yahushua. Yes. 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 
Praise Yahuwah. Praise Yahuwah. Praise Yahuwah. So, praise Yahuwah. So, yesterday was mm. Passover. Yahusha paid that price. Today is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And now, we have this opportunity to continue to move forward. Okay, Yahusha paid the price. Now we're following in his footsteps. Okay, so we take out the leaven. We choose to remove that leaven. So Yahuwah gives us this object lesson. Go through your house, find that, find that yeast, find that baking powder, and get it out of the house. That's to remind us, to make us think, okay, I need a new spirit. I need a new heart. I need a new attitude motivating, moving through my being. And where do I get that from? I get that from Yahuwah. Right, right sister? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. We get that from Yahuwah yes. through Yahusha. Mm, what a blessing. Okay. Yes. Tremendous blessing. What a blessing. Okay. And so that's why Feast of Unleavened Bread is just one day after Passover. Mm. You see that connection? Yes, okay. The Lamb of Yahuwah, which takes away the sins Sin of the world, right. he gave his life on Passover, Passover. day, the Sabbath. Okay? And now is our turn to take up the banner. Okay? Take that baton in hand, say, I'm, I'm, I'm following. He's already led the way. Okay? Follow I'm him. following Ooh. him. Okay, I'm following my Savior. He's my Savior. Mm. Yes. He's our Savior. I'm following Him. I'm going to unleaven myself. I'm going to get rid of that nonsense, that wickedness. Yes. I'm going to, and I'm going to claim His power to help me overcome. Yes. Okay, and that's what is going to move me. And the Scripture then tells us that a hundred days down the road. Okay, is the feast of weeks. weeks. Mm -hmm. So the reason why we unleaven ourselves is for a purpose. We are on a mission. Okay, the people of Yahuwah's word, which is all those within the world, okay, who embrace the scripture, Genesis to Revelation, yes. as the standard of righteousness. Right and embrace the instruction of Yahuwah, realize that they're on a mission mm -hmm. because they're rejecting Satan mm -hmm. and therefore Satan is gonna come after them. So be it. However, they already have the victory yes. and they're now lights yes. in this world That's to right. shine. Yes. He says, you are the light of this world. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, a, a, a candlestick, you know, a city set on a hill cannot be hid. Mm -hmm. Neither does a person put a, a, a torch or a candlestick and hide it under a basket. You are the light of the world. And so now your actions, your, your words, your behavior inspires others. And now what have you done? You removed the old leaven, right? The old leaven of malice and wickedness and selfishness. Yes. And so now you're prepared to become filled with a new spirit. That's right. Yeah. And so the Feast of Weeks, which some people call Pentecost, Pentecost. Yeah. okay, but it's called the Feast of Weeks, and it's um, about 100 days. We start measuring. So tomorrow, okay, on uh, about 2,000 years ago, okay, Tomorrow, when Yahusha was laying in the grave, he laid, he, he died on the 14th day of the first month. He rested on the gra in the grave on Sabbath day, the second Sabbath, which was the beginning of the feast of, of unleavened bread, Mazat, Mazat, okay? And then the very next day, the third day, he the, uh, the Hebrew people were to gather a, a bunch of grain out of the field mm. and they were to bring it to the priest on now the 16th day of the first new moon. And that was 
considered that was the the wave sheet that they were to wave before Yahuwah. Right. Right. So here they are bringing that wave sheet in the morning time before Yahuwah as the first fruits, and they were not to bring they were not to harvest anything until they waved that wave sheet before Yahuwah by the priest waved it. Well, on that day, what happened? Yahusha rose. That's right. He's the first fruit of them that sleep in the grave. See, this prophecy is anchored right in the word, right in the, the appointed times of Yahuwah. Passover, Feast of Eleven Bread, Day of First Fruits. One, two, three. Yes. He said, the third day, I shall rise. Yes. Yes. And he was risen by Yahuwah, right. his Hallelujah. father, Hallelujah. because yes. he had no unrighteousness in him. Therefore, the, even the law could not, because the law required that death comes to a wicked person. Yes. Okay? A person who has sin on them. Yeah. But as he said, he says, Satan... You know, uh, nothing. nothing. You check me out, but there's no <laughs> sin in me. Okay, Come on. <laughs> you can check me out. Come on now. You won't find yes, anything right. in me. Yeah, in so me. praise Yahuwah. Praise you know yeah, yeah. that He would be yeah. able to give life everlasting to you, to you, to Elder Lovey, to Elder Herbert, to uh, uh, Elder Emmanuel, to Elder Kevin. To Elder Walker, my lovely wife, Elisa, and to me, and Jasmine, right? Okay, so he knew that he would be able to give everlasting life if he was faithful. Okay, and so, yes, he had to overcome. So here it is, the next day, that 16th day, he rose again according to Scripture. You see, the Scripture says that the disciples didn't even know the Scripture that he was going to rise. Mm -hmm. And that's the scriptures right there in the festival. Yes. Mm -hmm. Locked right in. And see, that's another reason why we know that the Sabbath day cannot be based upon the Roman Catholic Gregorian calendar. That's right. It has, it's based upon what Yahuwah ordained mm -hmm. in right. the sun and the moon. That's right. A, a count man-made calendar is just a man-made calendar. The sun is talking to us. But yes, but you got the sun and the moon. No one can touch those. Yes, right. Okay, but those were Yahuwah's ordinances for Sabbath, for days, for years, and for all his appointed times, all his feast days. Okay, because the scripture says that you are to now measure starting after the Sabbath, Correct. okay, mm -hmm. which in order to have the seventh day Sabbath, okay, and have the next day after that start your count, that has to be locked right in to the day, okay, of the month. That's right. All right. It has to be locked right in so that even the Sabbath, okay, the seventh day Sabbath is locked right in to the day of the month. Okay, so praise Yahuwah. Um, and yes, you can um, get the, there's the 2024 calendar book that shows all the festivals of Yahuwah, that shows all of the, um, the feast days of Yahuwah, um, all the seventh day Sabbaths right there according to scripture. Yeah. Okay, using as Psalm 104, um, 19 says that Yahuwah ordained the moon for his appointed times. Yes. Okay? And and Genesis chapter one. Okay, verse uh verses fourteen through I think it's eighteen talks about the same thing where he created the sun and the moon, okay, mm -hmm. for for signs. Seasons. Okay, for yeah. seasons. Day but day. seasons is appointed Can times I, I, of Yahuwah. It's not yeah. like Spring, spring, summer, summer yeah, fall. Right, yeah, the right. word seasons is, is in the King James oftentimes is is a uh, misunderstood. Mm, right. Okay, that word seasons is moed or moedim, which means 
the appointed times of Yahuwah. Right. So we go through the scripture and we can see how that word is used and clearly the seventh day Sabbath is one of Yahuwah's Moeds or Moedim. Okay, so we have that there. So Sabbath day, seventh day Sabbath, along with all the festivals are based upon what Yahuwah right. created in his time ordinances, the sun and the moon, yes. for yes. us to be able to wise. be oh. never fooled again. Okay? So praise Yahuwah. So, yeah, you know, that the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, here we are, first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and we're called to eat unleavened bread for seven days. It's again to remind us. So we pulled all the leaven out, all that bad attitude, all that nonsense behavior, and we've given ourselves to Yahuwah and Yahusha. We've humbled ourselves. We've, we've said, Yahusha, you are my example. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to live my life now on through animated through your spirit. Okay, not animated by any other spirit from mm. below. Mm. No, but I'm gonna, I'm going to live by your spirit, which comes from above. That's right. Okay, and so that is what we are all about. We're about following Yahuwah and embracing the plan of salvation. Yes. So yes, that's you, you know this is this time, and you know. A fair, a lot of people who have, and I'll just uh, touch on this before I kind of open it up a little bit, and we can um, share some things about the uh, Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, uh, what it means to uh, one another. Um, but there are a lot of people who misunderstand. Well, wait a minute, does isn't Passover next month in April? And according to a Google search, when is Passover? It says. It says April 22nd. Did you have you looked at that? By any chance? No. If you just Google it, you'll see it says Passover April yeah, 22nd. I saw that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so some people have asked me, so why is it that you know you're keeping Passover? You seem like you're early. Right. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> you're early. <laughs> yeah. Well, the fact of the matter is. Is that no? We're on time. Praise right. Yahuwah. Yeah. 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 We're on time according yeah. to Yahuwah's word. Yes. You see, the traditions of men is the traditions of men. That's right. Yes. Okay. And so, <laughs> it is not April twenty second is not the is not the fourteenth. It doesn't fall on the fourteenth day of the first month. Hold on. Can you say that again? Yeah. Listen April, up. April twenty second. <laughs> does not fall on the 14th day of the first month, month of or the first new, new moon. There you go. Yeah. New year. Okay? Of the new year. Yes. It's actually around the time of the second month. Mm. So how is it that, you know, they're doing it then? Well, we have in Scripture an anchor point for how to determine the spring, that spring new moon. Right. Because even April 27th is still in springtime, you could say, right? Yes. Okay, so why is it not, that's not the first month, and this is the first month. Fundamental reason. Um, Elder Manuel. Yes. Um, read for us Exodus 34. Yes. Okay, verse 22. All from right. the scripture book. Praise Yahweh. All right. We have to speak a little louder. Alrighty. Verse 22, it says, And perform the festival of Sebo, that's Feast of Weeks, for yourself, of the first fruits of wheat harvest, and the festival of ingathering at the turn of the year. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. In the King James, it actually says, at the end of the year. Now, like, end of the year? Well, we know that that the seventh month is not the end of the year. But the scripture book actually more accurately mm -hmm. translates that because what it is saying is, is that the Feast of Ingathering, which is also tabernacles, mm -hmm. is to be celebrated, is to fall at that that mark marking point, that marker mm -hmm. that Yahuwah put within our, the sun, moon, 
and start or a uh, relationship, this cycle, yes. okay, which is actually the fall equinox, okay? Now, the in the Gregorian calendar, we have, you, you can see that, you know, perfectly uh, positioned these equinoxes to fall um, and the solstices right. to fall uh, in, uh, in around the 21st of these months. These arbitrary months, and not according to scripture. Okay, so you have the spring equinox, which is the t is the that that point that Yahuwah created in our time, where the daylight, most of the world is within what we call the northern hemisphere. Okay, where the daylight portion is equal to the night portion of the daily cycle. Okay, so the day is the light part of the day is about equal in time to the night part, the dark part of the day. That's called the equinox, when that happens. Well, um, then, after in the springtime, now when the days start getting longer, yes. as saying you've heard that saying before, you've observed it, okay? Mm -hmm. The days start getting longer, the sure nights does. are getting shorter, until it reaches a maximum point, which is the summer solstice. Yeah, right. Which happens around uh, June 21st. Yeah, correct. Okay. Well, now after the summer solstice, you have a long daylight, okay, uh, and yes. a short, relatively short night dark part. Well, after the summer solstice, now it starts moving. The the, the uh, light part of the day starts getting shorter until it equals the dark part of the day. Right. Guess when that falls? Winter solstice. Winter solstice. Fall. fall. That's right. The fall equinox. Absolutely, oh, yeah. Jonathan. Oh, yeah. Okay. The fall equinox. Mm -hmm. So that's the turn mm -hmm. of the year. Mm -hmm. Okay. It actually is about halfway through Yahuwah's calendar year. Right. So yes. he's I saying do. that the that the mm -hmm. um, tabernacles is to fall at the time of the fall equinox, that marker point that everyone will be able to see. And you can count from that point. So let's say that we have new moon, we have the spring new moon. I'm not sure if it is, is it this, this the beginning of the year or is it the next new moon? Well, let's just number off, okay, by um, the next, uh, six new moons, okay, that's going to bring us to the seventh new moon. Does it bring us to the fall equinox? Mm -hmm. Is the is tabernacles falling in the fall equinox, period? Mm -hmm. If it does, then we know that that first new moon of the year is the new moon, the beginning of mm -hmm. the year. Yeah. That new yes. moon is the first new moon of the year. Right. Yeah. So let's take a look. If April 22nd Okay, it's claiming to be the first month of the year. Okay, if we now take that, okay, as the first month, then where does that put Feast of Tabernacles? Mm -hmm. It puts right, us. Right. It puts us. It puts it way into the end of October. Right. Yes, which is nowhere near the fall equinox. Right. No, we're near the turn of the year. Another translation, Young's literal, it says the revolution of the year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? It actually uses the term in Exodus 34, 22, the revolution of the year. Mm -hmm. Just like the turning of the year, which is actually what Yahuwah created for us to see where to um, position things. Okay? okay? Because you need two points, two marking points, to be able to identify a point. Right. Yes, okay? That's right. And so we got, we identified the, the first new the moon of the year yes. by measuring to the, to the, to the um, yeah. tabernacles. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay? And so it's really amazing. Now, here's just an interesting note. September. What do you hear at the beginning of September? Is this is a historical witness, okay, that see, Yahuwah gives us ways to, to, um, to see, uh, what's really going on, okay, 
you know, Satan can't hide everything. No, he cannot. Okay? He cannot hide everything. No, he can't. Okay? So September, we're told that the that the tabernacles is to happen close to the fall equinox. Okay? Which is always in September. What is September? What, is, what do you hear in the word the September? Seven. 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 Which is what? Seven. Seven. Yeah. Okay, seven. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the seventh month according to the scripture. Right. According to the new, the, the, the lunar uh, uh, timekeeping that Yahuwah gave. September. Yes. Okay, seventh month. Yeah. Now, in the Gregorian calendar, what is it? What month? The ninth month. The ninth, ninth month. The ninth month. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 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 The ninth month. Yeah. The ninth the month. Yeah. That's crazy. Okay. October. Tenth month. month. November. Eleven. October. What do you hear in October? October. Uh, Oct, which is eight. 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 Yeah. Which is eight. so. But it's the, actually the 10th month according to the Gregorian calendar. Right, right, but right. what we see, even in the Gregorian calendar, is that they were working with another timekeeping system, which was a lunar timekeeping system. Mm -hmm. So even within that calendar, not all the months were named after pagan deities. Right. right. September, October, November. November, what do you hear in November? No. No, which is? Nine. It's the ninth month according to the lunar cycle. And then December. What do you hear in December? Desi, Desi which is ten. 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 Even though in the Gregorian count it's twelfth month. Mm -hmm. But historically it was the tenth month. In the Gregorian count it's twelfth month, but historically it was the tenth. Yes. You see? So Yahuwah has given us historical witnesses as well as, okay, as well as scriptural evidence that we can lock in his appointed times and know that we are doing what he says. He says, my Sabbath you shall keep. Amen. He didn't say man's Sabbath, his Sabbath, her Sabbath. He needs help from man. <laughs> Come on now. He said, my Sabbaths, you shall keep. My rest days, you shall keep. So if he's going to say you need to keep them, then he must give us a sure, fast, foundation way for us to be able to determine his Sabbaths. And he has done that. Yeah, he has yes. done that. Yeah. Okay? And so we can, because he says, my Sabbaths, is a sign between me and you. Okay, this is Exodus chapter 31, verse 13. It's a sign between me and you that I, Yahuwah, am the one that sets you apart, that sanctifies you. Okay. So, therefore, we need to know, we need to follow his instructions. Simple. It's just that simple. So, we are to follow his instructions. And praise Yahuwah, we can follow his instructions yes. through his strength, through his power, and through his word. Okay? Yeah. We're going to follow his word just even as Yahusha, the Messiah, Father. followed the yes. Father's word. Absolutely. And that is why he's called the word oh, of yeah. Yahuwah. Indeed. Okay? That's one of his titles, one of his names, the word of Yahuwah. He is the word, the spoken word from the very beginning. Our first parents, Adam, Eve, to, you know, all throughout the scripture, he is the one who is interacting with our, our Hebrew prophets. So, with that said, praise Yahuwah. I'd like to just kind of open up the floor a little bit for people to share some things as far as what they, you know, how they, you know, Anything from the word or from you know experience with Passover or uh, a piece of leavened bread has meant to them, and uh, or maybe they just want to just give a thanksgiving or praise to Yahuwah for what He has done in their lives. Impressed, impressed. Hi, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Yeah. 
first to express myself. I am I'm, I'm a little older than some of my peers here, and um, I, I crave, I, I, I thirst for um, greater things in my life now than I did when I was younger. You know, I was I was of the world, and I, you know, and I satisfied myself on on um, material things, um, worldly things. And as I, you know, I've been blessed. The Lord has blessed me to give me, to give me, uh, carry me into my latter years. And my thirst now is for direction. Um, you know, um, reference points um, in my life to, you know, to, to, you know, reach greater things, reach salvation. To, to thirst for the blessings that that are of a spiritual nature for the guidance that are of a spiritual nature. I put I put my childish things behind me. You know, I, I relish those I relish those memories, you know, and I enjoy them at that time. You know, I feel like who has has looked upon me and, you know, he he could he realized how foolish I was at that time. He you know, forever given forgiven me and um, allowed me to have um, the mental status to real, make the realizations that I need I need greater things in my life now. I need the spiritual edification. I need to have a stronger relationship with Yahuwah and Yahusha. And this is what he's given me. I, my trial is, you know, I can reflect on it and I can see that I was I was lifted during the times that I would that I needed to be lifted. I was given protection during the times that I needed protection. Mm -hmm. Now I need I need the, the blessed and the spiritual edification that that only that I can only receive from the Lord. You know, I feel truly blessed, and um, you know I, I found this I, I found this um, assembly through friendship, through through relationships, and um, you know I can't I can't tell you how much how much it means to me. And, you know, to be here, to be here at this time, amongst my family, my spiritual family, you know, is is a blessing beyond me being able to to describe it. You know, and I praise you every day. Praise you, praise you, praise you for looking down on me and allowing me, to, seeing me as fit to be blessed in this man. You know, I'm, I'm rambling on, but I, I. I I want you to feel more, more so than understand what I'm saying. Right? Yes. Yes. And, uh, I crave this for everyone. Yes. 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 Amen, brother. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 All right. Let's try to speak up too. <clears throat> Praise Yahuwah. Praise Yahuwah. Always the begotten Son, Yahusha. Our unblemished Lamb. Amen. Our unblemished lamb, he gave his sins willing, willingly for us, for me and every person here. This is an amazing moment for me. It really is, and it's more so it, it humbles me because I see my family on Zoom all the time. Even when I'm tired and wore out and fatigued, it's like God just gives me the strength just to get through that Shabbat. Because you know what? What the Shabbat means, it means you cease from all the work. It's a day to think on the one who created us, who gave us yeah. the birth of our lives, thanking him for his creation, thanking for the people that he put in our lives. And scripture tells us that Yah created Sabbath for man, not man for the Sabbath. Yes. Yes. This is his Sabbath. So as he rested from his works, as he so beautifully brought out in Hebrews, we are also to cease. He said there remains a Sabbath for the rest of all the people of the world. Yes. Anyone that turns their heart over to God who humbles himself and repents from their wickedness the scripture tells us to lay aside of our old filthiness and receive the engrafted word as they will say to us so there is power in this word we just have to let them practice and you know being around Yah is the most amazing moment I've ever experienced in my life you know being around this actually doing the, the, the practice of the taking 11 out and what the 11 means spiritually is that you're taking out that stony heart of flesh right. and he's giving you a new heart yeah. I think it makes me think about song when it says create me a clean heart mm -hmm. renew a right mm -hmm. spirit within me yeah. this is the time for us to cleanse ourselves from all wickedness from 
remove that stony heart, that malice, that filthy communication, fornication, every carnal thing. Because let me tell you something, the carnal mind is enmity to Yahuwah. Why? Because Yahuwah said it was. And to put in that new heart that's led by the Spirit. So I'm just thankful for God. I'm thankful for Pastor Tyler. I'm thankful for all the elders, even the youth that told me, listen, there's nothing by coincidence or chance. Y'all yes. drew you guys here. Yeah. Drew you all here. Even if it just, it's amazing. I'm just blown away. You know, so mm -hmm. praise Yahweh for Passover, for 11, giving us examples that we need to put this word to practice. So, I'm saying that. Yes. I ditto to everything you two brothers said. Yeah. You know, I think it's two things. Um, Yahushua said, study to show yourself approved. That's correct. That's right. If anyone, I was telling the elder Herbert about a situation where some people think that they have to, they think that they have to be clean to come to you and you would. That's just backwards thinking. You come here to get clean. Get clean. Yeah. You know? That's the thing. And I know I've heard people say, well, I'll come when I get myself to yeah. ready. Well, if you don't come, you ain't gonna get ready. You know, we know there's 70 weeks you're gonna come, but come now. Prepare yourself, study and learn. Yeah. And I can't, as I was listening to you, Pastor, I can't stop thinking about when Yahusha was on the mount and the adversary, Satan, promised him everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. Well, I'll give you everything if you just worship me. Mm -hmm. Go against your father. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand that by following him, that's what we have to do because he's doing that to us right now. Mm -hmm. The adversary is doing that to us every day. Yes. Right? Every single day he's, he's trying to get offering. us. Yeah. He did everything he could to prevent me from coming yeah. to here to be with my spiritual family. Yes. Yeah. Now he yeah. knows the power in this group. Yeah. <laughs> he knows what we're all about. Yeah. And he come in here, we all gonna get him. So he did everything in his power to keep me from coming here. And I thank Yahuwah and Yahusha for giving me the strength and the wisdom. I thank my family for giving me the strength and you know, that's all I want to say. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to take a break and say that if you love what you hear today, email us. Yes. All right? Yes. Email us at Yahoo's Word Academy at Gmail. Yahoo. That's our academy. <laughs> if you want to come to Yahoo's Word Academy, you should yeah, email, email us about that. That's our study group. But Yahoo's Word Assembly at gmail.com. And we'll get back to you. And uh, we would love to have you join us. Yeah. And that's all I wanted to say. For this first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And when my instructor told us this morning, he came and got us, I said, what about a shower? I said, I ain't take a shower yet. He said, come do this practical object lesson, and then you can take a shower. <laughs> so, I, so I came out and stuff, and I learned something so valuable about that I didn't know, because that's why I love being around my family who stick to the word. Mm -hmm. He said that the son, Yahushua Messiah, our master, he came here unleavened. Mm -hmm. He had, because, you, you know, I said, but Yahushua, how are we supposed to take the leaven out? Yahushua didn't have no leaven. But he said, but well, he came unleavened in a body, a fleshly body that's full of leaven, because all of us was shaped and formed in our mother's womb. We all came here sinners from our first parents. But it also tells you in Galatians, if you look at, turn your scriptures to Galatians 5, you will see that the it's on page 1135 it would tell you in in verse 19 the works of the flesh so this is the leaven see we have to be unleavened 
you know, the Father want us to take these things out so he can seal us with the seal of Yahuwah, the Most High Creator. It says, in the works of the flesh, verse 19, it says that the works of the flesh are well known. So this is no secret thing because the works of the flesh are manifest. It, it, we don't need to practice these things because we are already doing them in, in, the, in the adversary happy. He said, which are adultery, whoring, uncleanliness, indecency, idolatry, drug, sorcery, hatred, quarrels, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissension, factions, envy, murder, drunkenness, wild parties, and the like, of which I forewarn you, even as I also said before, that those who practice such as these shall not inherit mm. the reign of our Elohim. Yes, but the fruit of the Spirit, the Amen. things that we're supposed to be possessing, since the Father told us in John 14, 23, he said that we will come to you. He said we. He's speaking of Yahuwah, the Most High, and himself. He said, we will come in and set our tent up in your heart, in your inward man. We're going to cleanse the inward man. So it tells us that spirit, that's what we have. That's what we overcome us because the, he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. And it'll tell you, it says, these fruits, he left us. Yahushua left these fruits for us to bear. He left us the spirit of, of love joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, trustworthiness, gentleness, self-control. Mm -hmm. Now, can you grow, can anybody imagine having a plant, a uh, tree that's rooted in the ground and it's bringing up other little trees? Do you think the, the roots of the flesh go come up and have the fruits of this here that Yahuwah, Yahushua have put in us? No way, no how. So, Unleaven yourself, prepare yourself for the kingdom that's coming down like a bride so that we can all be sealed and go home and leave this place. And that's all I want to say on this beautiful um, unleavened bread week, seven days. Cleanse your house, cleanse your temple, cleanse your mind. Have the mind that was found in Yahusha. Let that mind be found in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. sharing that, brother. Yes. I can yeah. share something. I'm just thankful. Oh, okay. I just, um, I'm just very thankful. Yahuwah has set up this object lessons for us this day. So we can remember, because we are so busy in the world, we're, we're doing our own thing. Yes. But the Sabbath helps us to remember, to rest. And to focus on the word of Yahuwah. Mm, that's right. Yeah, he, yeah. he requires yes. us to do his word. And the, the Passover just reminds me that I have I have someone that um, Yahusha, my savior, he saved me from my sin. He died for me. He's my yes. atonement. Um, yes. And I'm forgiven. Now, we have to be forgiven. So once you choose him you will be forgiven mm -hmm. from your sins because the wages of sins are is death yeah. Yeah. so if i sin yesterday but not today but i sin yesterday i, I need an atonement and yahusha is my atonement is Amen. our atonement yes. and um i'm just thankful yes. also for this these people here uh, we didn't go search for them. We, it, it's that Yahuwah just put us together because we have mm. one heart, one mind. Because mm. we're searching yes. to please the Father yes. and the Son. Yes. Okay, yes. our hearts. We 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 yearn to to please Him and not you know please flesh and 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 so, that selfishness. Yeah. So I'm mm -hmm. just very thankful for Passover for for the um, Feast of Unleavened Bread, and we're gonna have, towards the end, the Feast of Tabernacle, all the feasts, this is 
an object lesson that everyone should learn because even if you're slow to, to learn, like I am, I'm slow to learn, but just practicing it, it stays in my mind. Mm -hmm. And I see the purpose of Yahoo and Yahusha for us. Mm -hmm. I just praise Yahoo. That's I'm number thankful one. to yes. all you guys. And uh, praise lovely. Yahoo. Praise Amen. Yahoo. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Praise Yahuwah. I'm not going to say a lot, but I just wanted to share with you all that today um, we have something very special mm -hmm. happening after our service. And um, I don't know if we're going to be able to videotape it, but we're going to, we have two people who have chosen, um, at least two people who have chosen to receive the um, to walk in the example that Yahuwah has given us, and that is to be immersed and, and to embrace that example, to go down in that watery grave, just as Yahusha did, and, and receive the blessing that comes from Yahuwah, to walk in newness of life. And so this is a tremendous blessing. Our elders Herbert and Elder Kevin, um, yes. This is the first time that we're actually together. Now yes. that we can actually come together and um, go to that into that watery grave to show our our oneness with Yahuwah's word. Okay, and our oneness with our Savior, our Master, our the Messiah of the world, Yahusha. Okay, as well, the Captain. I'll do it today too. Amen. But I just wanted to read <clears throat> from Acts 26, it's on page 1085, and um, Yahusha, the apostle, um, Shaul, also known as Apostle Paul, is recounting his experience. And Yahusha speaks to him in this verse. Page this is page 1085. 1085. Thank you. Chapter 26, verse, I'm going to start at verse um, 12. Actually, no, I'm going to back up and put some context. Verse 8 says, Why is it considered unbelievable among you if Alahim raises the dead. Mm -hmm. Therefore, indeed, I thought within myself that I ought to do much against the name of Yahusha, of Naz Nazareth, mm -hmm. which also I did in Yerushalayim. And I shut up many of the set-apart ones in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. Mm -hmm. Not authority from Yahuwah. No. But authority from who? Man. From Man. the chief priests. Yes. This is going to be repeated again. Okay? Mm -hmm. And when they were put to death, I gave my vote against them. And punishing them often in all the congregations, I compelled them. This is Shaul, Apostle Paul, has given his testimony. Says, and punishing them often in all the congregations, I compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly enraged against them, I persecuted them even to foreign cities. While thus engaged, as I was journeying to Damascus, Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest, at midday along the highway, O sovereign, talking to King Agrippa, okay? I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun shining around me and those who journeyed with me. And when we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the Hebrew language, Shaul, Shaul, why do you persecute me? Mm. It is hard for you to kick against the prods. And I said, Who are you, Master? And he said, I am 
Yahusha, whom you persecute. Mm. But rise up and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you a servant and a witness both of what you saw and of those which I shall reveal to you, delivering you from the people and the nations to whom I now send you, to open their eyes, to turn, go ahead and let's read it together. Verse 18, to, to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, and the authority of Satan to Elohim, in order for them to receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are set apart by belief in me. See, that is yes. our calling. That's right. Yes. Is to open the eyes. If your eyes are not opened, then you can't see. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we are called to open the eyes. Be a co labor with Yahusha, Messiah. That's right. To turn them from darkness to light and the authority of Satan to the authority of Yahuwah Alaheem. That's what it's about. You see, whose authority am I operating under if I'm not operating under the authority of Yahusha? That's right. I'm operating under my own, which if it's not under Yahuwah and Yahusha, it's under Satan. Yes. That's right. It's in the, it's darkness. Mm -hmm. So this is, and then it says so beautifully. Yahusha says to Shaul, he says, in order. So I'm opening their eyes, turning them to the authority of of mm -hmm. Alahim, Yahuwah. Okay, in order for them to receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among those who are set apart by belief in me. Mm. The only way that we can receive inheritance is if we have received forgiveness of sins. We need to confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all oh, unrighteousness. Yeah. So this is what it's all about. And when we have these uh, immersions, some people call them baptisms, but the word is immersed, to be immersed in the water. Okay? Yeah. And just go down. It's a, a, it, Yahusha did that. Seat. Okay, to show us the way. See, Yahuwah's word is so practical. I just love the word of Yahuwah because it is just so practical. And it gives us, just gives us clear, tangible reminders that we can anchor. I remember, yes, I went down into that watery grave and now I'm to live a new life. I'm to live with him. Okay, as part of my as as my 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 leader. Okay? And his spirit is now in me to guide me in the way. As Elder Walker read in the uh, from uh, Galatians, okay, the the, the con the contrast between the old person mm -hmm. and the new person. Mm -hmm. So praise Yahuwah. I'm looking forward to these immersions and uh, I just praise Yahuwah. I'm just so grateful to be here, to be part of this assembly. And I know that Yahuwah has, has raised this assembly up to point people in that path that leads to forgiveness, okay, and inheritance. Lead us away from darkness into the light of the good news. Praise yes. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. And I want to say, I thank you who are for. I want to say, I thank you who are for everything that you've done for me. From taking me from where I was, bringing me here now. And it's crazy because, you know, I prayed for this so that we can congregate. This is before I knew 
And then the very next day, you guys tell me that you guys are coming to Florida. Mm-hmm. Which is why I was so excited to be like, absolutely I'm coming. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm very happy that we're here. I also, you know, I pray for my brothers abroad. I hope next year that they're here with us. And, you know, things like that. That I pray that the most High watches over them and carries them on their journey so that they can be here as well. And, you know, I thank you for everything. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Well, to start off by saying thank you for this gift of this day, this blessing. First of all, to be on this side of the of the dirt of your creation, to have life that was bred, bred, breathed in me this morning. Um, thank you for this assembly, for all of my brothers, sisters. As each week we go forth on this journey and this walk of life, I thank you for it, Abba Yahuwah Amen. and Yahshua, for your blessings, grace, and mercy throughout all my transgressions each and every day that I may go through with life, within life. And I'm so grateful to have this group, these wonderful brothers and sisters of mine and spirit and the faith that I endure talking to on conversations within my life and I'm just so blessed and so happy that I'm able to meet each and every one of you in person this week on this Sabbath second Sabbath of the first year during Passover as well as the Feast of Eleven Breads thank you Pastor for inviting me into your lovely home and your wife I thank you for that Brother Will and Brother Manuel, you know, we always talk, you know, always, always. always. Brother always. Herbert and Brother Kevin, thank yes. you, gentlemen, oh, praise for praise your, you. your, yes. your kind guidance in parts, in parts of my life. I want to thank you. Thank you for your conversations, Brother Kevin. Oh, brother, no, my pleasure. Always, no, no matter what, thank you. Sister Jasmine, Brother Jonathan, thank you for meeting me for the first time. Hopefully, hopefully we have more and more meetings in this walk in this lifetime. I'm always up that way, so when I come that way, hopefully I'll see you when I see Pastor and Elder Lee. And Sister Levy, I love you so very much. I love you so very much. Thank you. And that's just my my Thanksgiving for this moment. So thank you. My, I'm Lavi. Yes. I'm the oldest one in the group. Yahuwah has blessed me to live to be 80 years old. Hallelujah. 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 And I am really grateful. I am so grateful for Willie. And he talked to me and he, how should I put it? You know, find Bible text. He said, I, I found this. I want you to read this. I want you to do such and such. So, well, I, 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 I have three children, but I, I'm, I'm the only child. And I am just so grateful for this group. I'm so grateful for the kindness that have been shown to me. I am so grateful that you has said, you're one of my chosen ones, kind. And that makes me feel happy. And when I see the things that we go through that we don't go through and that we do and that we don't do, it really makes me happy because I know who is soon to come. And I, as I tell Willie, I want to see his face in peace. I do not want to ask the rocks and the mountains to fall on me to hide me from his face. I want him to say, come, bless it. And this is what I want. And I'm saying this for all of us. We all have family that some believe, some don't believe, uh, and what have you. And I pray that our families will be with us. But if our families are not with us, may we all be in with you and we're together. Amen. 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 Praise you. Praise Yahuwah. This has just been a real tremendous blessing. 
And I'm just, you know, just very, very thankful that Yahuwah has called us to come together. You know, there's some people who think that, you know, um, it's okay just to stay separate and uh, maybe just to call each other on the phone or do a Zoom call here and there and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But we don't need each other to come together. And, but the scripture says, come together, mm -hmm. gather, yeah, have yeah. a set apart convocation. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he calls us to put effort into coming together mm -hmm. because it's through us, this coming together in the flesh, okay, where we can see each other face to face that we grow and we experience, we are encouraged and we are strengthened right. in the way of sure. righteousness. Amen. Because we're not called to sin, we're called to righteousness. Right. And so therefore we've got to be putting away all the works of the flesh, we've got to yes. put away all that Please. stuff. Yeah. And you can help me, brother, you know, sister, you can help me, yes. I can help you. You know, as iron sharpens iron, so yes. one man yes. sharpens yes. another. Hallelujah. Oh yeah. Hallelujah. So that's what that's why we have to come together. Right. Okay? So I would encourage people we I got an email from a sister from Nigeria, okay, who was wanting more information. I sent her the, the uh, 2024 calendar book. And if you're hearing this and you're in Nigeria, you're in Australia, you're in um, Spain. Italy, you name it, any place upon the face of this earth that Yahuwah created, you hear this message, and you, there's a group of people who are believing and are putting their trust in Yahuwah and His Word. Assemble yourselves, call upon Yahuwah and Yahusha, and He will deliver you. He yes. will yes. bring deliverance as He is bringing deliverance to us. And you are also welcome to join us and our, our, our Yahusha's Academy, okay, we, we gather on, on there, but we also gather on the Sabbath day um, via Zoom when we're not congregating together here. So you're also welcome, and if you're interested, feel, please feel free, reach out to us at Yahuwah's Word Assembly at gmail.com, and we'll, we will follow up. Okay. okay, so praise Yahuwah. Praise, praise Yahuwah. Yahuwah. Praise Yahuwah. Yahuwah. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Let us have a word of prayer. Okay. Yahuwah, in the highest, we just want to give you thanks and praise for all of your many blessings. We thank you for this time that we can gather on this first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, this high Sabbath that you have given to us to remember what you did in sending your Son and making a way, a way, a certain way, an assured way to the kingdom, to that, that life everlasting in peace and joy and happiness throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. That's what it's all about, is to be part of Yahuwah and Yahusha's kingdom. So Father, bless us and bless all those who hear this message and, and consider and continue to study their, the word of truth, guide and direct and help each one that they too, as we have received forgiveness of sins, that we may have in inheritance into your kingdom. In the name of Yahusha, HaMashiach, the Messiah, we do praise you and give you thanks. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. All right. Until next time, praise Yahuwah. Amen. Amen. Amen.